Kim Roy said that uh, Jesse Bill the banged up the other had practice, missed some practice time this week. What is the ailment and how do you feel? Uh, just ankle. Um, rolled it up at the end of the game, obviously, versus Virginia. I've uh, kind of been dealing with it for a couple of weeks now. I'm just trying to get it back to 100%. Um, but I'm feeling all right right now. Doing a lot of treatment on it. So you had, I know that you turned it against Virginia. Yeah. You said you came down on something's foot. Yeah. Did it happen prior to that as well? Um, I first turned it, I think, in the Harvard game. And, you know, every now and then I'll kind of tweak it again. But... Um, I'll, I'll be all right. Uh, just kind of rolled it over a foot, and you know how those are. This can be a little annoying. You all might be, you know, Roy said that um, Sterling Manning's out, Leakey's out, and potentially this year, based on today's practice. How does the lacking those players affect kind of what y'all do, what y'all can do, depth wise? I mean, we, we rely on depth sometimes. Uh, I like to play at a fast pace, kind of like to enforce that on the other team. Um, and obviously, without a couple players, you know. You're missing that a little bit. Um, but, you know, it just means uh, everybody else got to do a little bit more uh, and got to contribute a little bit more. Cam, what's the approach been like in practice this week? Is it How much does it change coming off the balls? Is there a different intensity from the coaching staff and from the players? Yeah, you can see a little bit different intensity. Um, you know, we, we had a little win streak going, and, you know, everything's good when that happens. But, you know, when you lose a game, especially on your home court, it, it can hit you a little harder. Um, so everything's kind of ramped up. Um, tomorrow's a game that we really want to get. Uh, and we want to come out and, you know, not have what happened on Monday happen on, on tomorrow afternoon. Okay, we were talking to Roy about uh, how he would prefer not to have to call set plays late in the game and understand he has to do it some. As a player, I know majority of the game you just work within that passing game freelance setup. Does, is it easier when he's calling set plays late like he did in the last two games? It just depends on the situation, honestly. Um, There'll be times when we're really flowing, uh, when we're flowing and we're in a kind of a good groove and we're hitting shots and freelance, you know, it's, it's pretty easy to, to get buckets out of it. But sometimes when we kind of um, get a little slowed down by the other team and, you know, shots might not be falling, critical times in games, sometimes, you know, set play might, might help us kind of find the specific point where we want to, where we want to attack the other team. And uh, I think, you know, the plays that we have, get us open shots in those scenarios. Knowing that in March, a lot of the end, near end of game situations, there are more timeouts, there's going to be more stuff that is called. How beneficial do you think it was to the younger guys, especially seeing Roy call those timeouts, you know, draw up plays and call plays in, in the timeout and expect you guys to go out and execute it, seeing it work Monday or Saturday and maybe not work as much on, on Monday. What is the value that those guys got out of the experience that will help them down the road? Well, just how we approach late game situations. Um, we do a lot of work in practice, you know, 86-80 with three minutes to go. Um, but, you know, it's always a little bit different when you get to game time. So getting in those situations and kind of handling, um, you know, just everything that comes along with it, you know, just from what the other team might be doing to what kind of shot we want to get and how fast we want to get it and what we want to do on the defensive end. There's just a lot of factors that are involved in late game situations. Um, so just, you know, that experience is good when you win. We'd rather come out on the winning end for all of them, but you know, I think we learned something from both of those games. Cam, after film review, kind of what was your key takeaway from how Monday's game ended? Um, it's just it's crazy how uh, a little, a couple little plays can add up, make such a big difference. Uh, I know that the game was uh, eight points at the end, but it felt a little bit closer than that, especially down the stretch. Uh, you take. Kobe's last second um, shot clock violation on both, the one where the ball was rolling in the backcourt and he picked it up and laid it in, and the one where he hit the three. I mean, that's five points. That would have been pretty big when we had a five, six, three, four-point lead at any point in the second half. Um, so it's crazy how little plays can add up, and it's just about attention to detail and uh, kind of taking advantage of every little opportunity we get, um, and, and that, that really stood out in the film. You're coming down the stretch on your second season here, and every team has their own ups and downs and that. Just wondering how you're enjoying both the uh, the prestige of being in a program like Carroll this time of the season and also the pressure that a team like Carroll has. Um, I, I kind of just enjoy it uh, all throughout. Um, you know, the pressure is, is, it is what it is at this level, um, and you kind of get used to it at a certain point where, you know, you're expected to go out there and perform every day. Um, but I just enjoy it, you know. It's a, it's a great experience. It's an experience that, you know, many people want growing up. And, you know, sometimes when things get a little tough, all you got to do is think back to that. Like when, I, when you were 
when you were a middle schooler or elementary schooler and you just think, you know, I want to play for Carolina one day, I want to play for Coach Williams one day, and you're here now, you know, I'm here now. So you just got to enjoy it. You got to embrace it. You got to kind of embrace the, the good times and, you know, learn from the bad times and keep moving forward. Along those lines, I mean, how coming back for this year um, and obviously having a pretty good season in the NBA draft cycle, going up, how happy are you? And do you expect this type of season, your second year you would see after transferring? I wouldn't necessarily say, you know, I had concrete expectations. Um, you know, I kind of just take it game by game, day by day, and try to, you know, mark down improvement, you know, where I can improve in this, where I can improve in that. And so a lot of the things that I've done, I feel like, are things that I wanted to improve. So that's encouraging, but I still have a lot of room to get better there. So I am i don't really sit back and think, you know, this is what I wanted to do. This is where I wanted to be. I kind of just look forward and say this is what I want to improve. This is what I want to get better at and then keep pushing forward. Clearly, the transfer really worked out well for you. Yeah, I, I don't regret a thing, honestly. Um, it's one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life, and I thank the people around me for that, and I thank the coaching staff for that. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm really enjoying my time here. Cam, you learned pretty quickly in this conference you can't look past anybody. Oh, no. Is it important, even more so this week, in lieu of what's down the road for you to focus on this game and not what? May lie ahead for this game. Yeah, definitely. Um, and we know that one game at a time can't overlook anybody um, because, you know, at the end of the day, these are college basketball players, you know, that compete in the ACC. So they've gone through 10 plus games in this conference and they kind of know, you know, the level at which you need to play. And, you know, I feel like anytime Carolina comes to town, teams do get a little more excited. So it's just about on us coming out, um, really giving them our best shot, playing our hardest and not overlooking anybody because, you know, Wednesday's game will come, um, but tomorrow's the one that we really got to focus on right now. How have you seen Garrison's game progress since conference play started? Um, he's been pretty opportunistic. Uh, one thing I think he's doing really good is just positioning himself. Uh, offensive rebounds, post-ups, you know, little feeds on the inside. He's doing a really good job with that, in my opinion, um, getting good position. And, you know, I think he's just paying a little closer attention to detail. Um, he's passing the ball well, rebounding the ball well, and then he, he contributes some points. Um, that's been pretty big for us, and I think he did really well against Virginia. And, you know, that's kind of what I expected out of him because he's a pretty good player. This offense historically has those big guys that make themselves available down low and score mm -hmm. a natural part of the offense. When he's doing that for you, you see a noticeable difference maybe in some of the shots that you guys start to get in stretches? Yeah. Um, one thing that you that you can easily note is the fact that, you know, some games he's had some pretty high assist numbers, pretty low turnovers. Uh, so when he does get scoring, it, it attracts attention. And I think he's done a pretty good job of kind of spreading the ball around when that happens. I know I've been the beneficiary of a few of them. Um, so I just, you know, I think that's really big for us, having that established kind of presence down low that he's he's really starting to provide is um, pretty critical and kind of just opening things up for the wing players and for Luke and just for the whole offense in general.